Well, hello there. Eric Griffith here with Mobile Tech Services. And today we're going to resolve an issue that I've had with Google Drive and teachers for a while now. There's a lot of teachers that are under the impression that the only way that they can access those files from their Google Drive is by going to drive.google.com and downloading the files, working on them, and then uploading them when they're done. That's not the case. You see, over the last few years, Google has had a few iterations of this application that has, in short, taken their Google Drive and made it appear like a thumb drive that is plugged into the computer, all right? It was called a couple of different names, Google Drive Backup and Sync, Google Drive File Stream, and now they've changed it and unified it and called it Google Drive for Desktop. So in short, what this is going to do is make your Google Drive seem like a thumb drive that is plugged right into your computer so that you can access those files and work offline or online really easily. All right, so what I'm going to do is talk about it a little bit, then we're going to actually go to the website, download and install it, and then we're going to walk you through setting it up. So if you're a tech person or you have already downloaded the application, since this is a YouTube video, feel free to scrub through to that point. Notice when you scrub through on the timeline, the text will pop up and you'll see the section that talks about setting up Google Drive for desktop. That's the part you want to start at. But the first part I'm going to review here, again, this is an OS solution, meaning operating system solution for Mac and PC. So this works on Apple computers as well as Windows computers. It is very easy to set up and install, and I'm going to walk you through it. It appears, if it's loaded correctly, in the icon or the, I'm sorry, the task bar, uh, task tray down below or in the bar up top for a Mac. So it's going to be the little Windows, or I'm sorry, the little Google Drive logo right there. You're going to want to click on that to access it. All right. It requires you to sign in with your school Google account or your personal account. It doesn't matter, um, depending on what files you want to synchronize. If this is school related, you definitely want to use your school account. All right. The other option it gives you to do is the ability to stream or mirror your data. All right. So stream means it's on demand. So if I'm scrolling through and I'm looking for things, I double click on it. It's going to download it from the web and open it up. If I mirror it, that means the file is already on my computer. So it's living on the computer. And in the event I don't have the Internet around, let's just say you have shoddy Internet at your school or in some location where you're at, you can actually have all these files backed up on your computer. It's kind of a nice feature, which is why they call it mirror versus streaming. All right. The other option is it allows you to back up a specific folder on your computer. So your tech person has probably always told you never save things on your desktop, right? Because in the event that something goes wrong and your computer dies, then you've lost any of those files that are saved on your drive. So, or your desktop. So now we can specify and tell Google Drive uh, for desktop to back up specific folders. So you can have it backing up your desktop if you want it to. All right. So it's really there to help you. All right. So let's go ahead and get started and take a look at how to download and install this. So again, in this section, if you already have it installed, skip through this section and jump to the part that says setting up Google Drive for desktop. Let's jump over to my Windows laptop here and take a look. So I am in my drive.google.com. So I've gone to drive.google.com and you can see here's all the items inside of my Google Drive. Okay, so what I want to do to download inst and install Google Drive for Desktop is click this gear, and then I want to go to the button that says Get Drive for Desktop. Okay, so as soon as I click on this, it's going to take me to this web page, and then I want to scroll down to the bottom where it says Download Drive for Desktop. I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and it will slowly download. When it gets downloaded, you want to go ahead and click on this install file and it'll start to install. All right. So if you don't have the right to install programs on your computer, this is something your technology person will have to do. But most likely your school has already downloaded, installed this and pushed this out to your computer. So you just need the part that says set up Google Drive for desktop. All right. So I've stalled long enough. It downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and click on it and it's going to start the install process. And again, if you get to this process and it says, I'm sorry, you don't have the access to do it, you gotta call your tech person, all right? Now it says, install Google Drive. 
should I add an application shortcut to your desktop? What that means is it's going to put the Google Drive logo uh, as well as all of the other Google Docs, Sheets, Slides, shortcuts onto the desktop. Whether you find that helpful or not, that's up to you. I'm going to go ahead and add it and then click install. It'll take just a minute to install and then it's going to run us through a screen that explains what it's doing. All right. So it'll take a second and then it's going to prop up pop up with this window. Now, a good thing to, to notice is if you start up your computer and it says sign in with browser right there, that means you've been signed out of Google Drive and you need to sign back in in order to do it. All right. So the very first thing we want to do is click sign in with browser and it's going to prompt us to log in with our school account. Hopefully it took you right to your web browser and you can just click sign in and then sign in. Now it may have you sign in your password if you haven't signed in with your password for a while. Okay, so now there's a button that says uh, backup and sync is no longer supported and can be removed. That's because on this particular computer, I had backup and sync installed and uh, I can go ahead and remove that later. Um, so if you're a technology person or you had a pre-existing file there, it'll say, hey, it's no longer supported. Do you wanna remove it? I'm just gonna hit not now. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this and close this and you'll notice that it says uh, open the preferences right down here. Now you notice on my Windows it doesn't have any uh, Google Drive logo down here. That's because Windows automatically by default hides it. So if I want to see it I need to go down to this little carrot right down here, click on this and then I'm going to drag Google Drive out to the box and bring it down to the file here. All right, So I'm just going to drag it and drop it and so I can see that file running right down there. Then I'm going to go ahead and click on it once and notice it signed me in automatically. Okay, so let's go ahead and click this gear right here and I'm going to go through the preferences and this is what we want to specify in this list. All right, so it says, all right, let's get started with Google Drive for desktop. And it's going to say, hey, we're safely backing up for files. You can access this from your computer and you can have multiple accounts. So if for some reason, if you wanted to have your school account and your personal account on here, Pending it's okay with your tech person, you can do that. So I'm not going to take a tour now. I'm going to hit skip because you got a good tour guide with you right now. The top part says folders from my laptop. So in this situation, I want to go ahead and back up all of these files that I have on my desktop. I really only have two or three. The rest of these are shortcuts, but I just want to show you what this looks like. So I'm going to add a file to my desktop. I'm going to hit add or add a folder so that it browses and I'm just gonna click on desktop right there. And then I'm gonna click select folder. So what this means is we've said from now on Google, I want you to automatically back up everything that is on my desktop, okay? So I'm gonna hit select this folder right here and it's gonna say, hey, it's gonna sync it. Uh, it'll back up any folders I have to Google. If I check that, I'm not gonna back that up. And then I'll hit done. And you'll notice that it's going to start backing this up, okay? Kind of neat. So I could go through and back up my other documents too, like my uh, my documents, uh, my pictures, different things like that. I could go through and back up each one of those folders if I periodically save things to there. So not a bad idea if um, you do that. All right. The next thing down is I want to go ahead and click save. The next thing down is I want to go right here to where it says Google Drive. If I click on this, it's going to give me two options. It says, hey, which do you want to do? Do you want to stream those files? Or do you want to mirror your files? Again, streaming means that is going to take those files and when you click on them in the link, which we'll look at here in a second, it's going to download them immediately. So that would mean you need to be connected to the internet in order to access those files. If I choose mirrored, that means all of those files have already been downloaded to Google, uh, I'm sorry, to my laptop or desktop, this laptop in this situation, and it's ready to go. So if I have bad internet at school, or if I have a laptop and I travel with it often and I'm not always connected to the internet, the safer way to go is mirroring the files. With one exception. If my school laptop doesn't have a really big hard drive on it, and I have a lot of things saved to my Google Drive, Google's gonna say, hey, I can't mirror everything. So you want to check and make sure that you don't have more things in your Google Drive up in the cloud than your laptop can hold. All right. One way to check that is if I open up my Internet Explorer, or I'm sorry, my Explorer folder. So I'm going to click File Explorer right here. 
and I'm going to move this to the side right now, I can see right here where it says this PC that I have a pretty small uh, amount of storage right there, okay? And so if it was all the way full and it was red and it says you have, you know, a terabyte of data stored up there, the, your Google Drive folder um, is probably not going to have enough data to be able to move that back down there. It'll synchronize and tell you, hey, I can't do this. If that's the case, you don't really have to check this. It'll eventually tell you. But if you have any issues, you can always consult your tech person and say, hey, is it okay for me to mirror? All right. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And I'm going to choose mirror. Now it's going to ask me to confirm a location. So this is the name of the computer. This is my mobile tech services trainer laptop. And it's under drive. And so it's going to be Windows. Uh, I'm sorry, C colon users. This is the name of the user, and then it says my drive. Now I could change this if I wanted, all right? So I could change this to another location. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit confirm, and then I'm going to hit save. And now what I want you to do is, uh, it's going to ask to me to restart my Google Drive, but what I want you to do is notice right down here at the bottom, this is your little Google Drive logo, watch what happens. So let's go ahead and hit restart and it's going to close. Notice it's grayed out and it disappeared, but it's gonna pop right back up, automatically log in. And if we look down here in the corner, it's kind of tough to see, but that little delta is actually spinning around. That means those files are synchronizing. So if I click on it, it's showing us that it is synchronizing all these files. So depending on how big your hard drive is and how much information you have inside your Google Drive, it's going to take a while to synchronize all of those files down there. All right. Might take 10 minutes, might take two minutes, might take two days. Just depends on how long you've been educating and filling up your Google Drive. All right. Now it's only going to put the things that are in your Google Drive downloaded there. So when it's done, it's going to look like this and it's going to say everything is up to date. All right. So what have we done? All right. If we look at this now, I have my C drive. This is where all of my files resided previously. I now have this folder right here that says Google Drive. This kind of looks like a thumb drive, right? One of those thumb drives that we put into the side of the computer. And when we do that, it detects a new drive. It says it's drive G or H or J or P, whatever it is. This is a separate folder or a separate location on your computer where all of your Google documents now live. So if I double click on this, you can now see that this says other computers. It says shared drives, and then it says my drive. So this is actually the same setup as your Google Drive. So what I want to do is confirm that. So if we double click on this and open that up, we're going to see a copy of all of the files that we put inside of that Google Classroom. All right. So this is a copy of everything. So including these PDFs, any Word documents, anything that you had automatically downloaded is synchronized through there. So what does that mean? When you double click on these things, they can automatically open up just like as if you had a thumb drive plugged in. So no more having to go to drive.google.com and opening up those files and downloading them editing them and putting them back into place. Now, the other thing that we have the ability to do is if I move this Google Drive, if I move this Explorer window open, I can take a file and drag and drop it and put it into my Google Drive. So as a test, I'll just call this file right here, test. So I'm gonna click on this once and I'll rename it and we'll call it test. We'll rename this file to test, there we go. And I'm going to open up my Google Drive again and if I click on Google Drive here, I'm going to jump back to my Google Drive. And if I get a file view here, so I'm going to change my view to the file view. I do not see a folder that says just, or a file that just says test. I have a, some other test files named forms and different things like that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this file over to this side right here. Close this guy real quick. And I'm going to drag this one file that says test and I'm going to move this into my Google Drive. So what happens when I do that is this little guy right down here spins. If I click on here, I can see that he's synchronizing right now, and it says test is synchronized. That should mean that if I go back to, oops, if I go back to this file, I can see that test is synchronized right there. So it wasn't there before when we looked at it on Google Drive, now it is. So this gives you the ability to synchronize 
all of your files, move your files around and get organized within Google Drive. If you delete something within Google Drive, either on this desktop or inside Google Drive, it'll synchronize and it'll really help you out. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to add them in the comments below, or you can ask your tech person and I'm sure they can help you out. All right. If I've earned it, please go ahead and click subscribe and maybe even a thumbs up. And I hope that you have a griftastic day. Thanks.